Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, I thought I would cover something that I've been discovering for myself these last few weeks, and I couldn't find a whole lot of information on YouTube, but that is how I can use my iPad Pro uh, as a tool to record music here at my house, uh, in my studio. Um, I found a lot of information on how people making electronic music can use their iPads pretty efficiently, but uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty towards whether an iPad Pro can really be used to replace your, your standard workflow or replace a, a desktop computer or a laptop. Uh, so I'm gonna cover a little bit of that, what I think its limitations are and what I think its pros are. There's a lot of really great resources on YouTube and people that use their iPad Pros really well. Uh, Chris Meets Chris, who I actually live with, is who inspired me to move exclusively to the iPad Pro. I'm going to link his channel below, you should definitely check it out, but what he does with an iPad is ridiculous. And Henny the Business is another person on YouTube that uses an iPad Pro. He actually uses it for music production, so I got some ideas from him. Um, and I'm just going to elaborate on those a little bit more for things that I felt were a little more relevant for me. The iPad that I'm using today, this is a Gen 3 256GB uh, iPad Pro. They obviously just released the Gen 4, which wasn't super different, not different enough for me to want to make the change. But this is going to be pretty relevant to any of the iPad Pro models that are available today. The big improvement that came with the Generation 3 iPad Pro was the ability to use USB-C in uh, connecting things to the iPad. The number one thing that I would recommend anyone gets when they are looking to record any music into their iPad is you absolutely need a USB-C dongle of some sort. This was just off Amazon. It's called like the Homie, the Homie. I don't know if you can see that. But that just plugs straight into the side of my iPad, like so. I like this one because it has a charge through port so I can keep charging my iPad, but I can also use HDMI and USB externally. Then you're going to need a audio interface, but in order for it to work with an iPad, it has to be class compliant. Basically what that means is that it needs to be able to function without the addition of any extra drivers. Apple doesn't let you in install external drivers onto your iPad OS or iPhone operating system. So there is a, a range of interfaces that do comply to those standards, but it does really limit some of your options when you're looking into that kind of more high-end stuff. Things like the Apogee Duet or the, the Focusrite Scarlet series, really good places to start. Uh, I personally chose the Steinberg UR44C. This is the new model. Uh, it has a USB-C input. Uh, I like this because it's also powered, it has a power supply, so you can power it by the USB-C if you're using it with a laptop that can supply enough power to the unit. The iPad Pro, it can do it, but I think it drains, drains the battery pretty quickly. So I prefer to use it plugged in and then USB-C into my iPad. But I also, I do like the fact that if I was traveling somewhere, I could just use a USB-C cable and use it with my iPad if I needed to. Um, the other reason I chose this is because it has four preamp inputs. A lot of interfaces only come with one or two. You start getting pretty pricey when you look at four. Uh, so this one has decent reviews. Um, I've only recently acquired it, so I'm just trying it out at the moment, uh, and I'm not going to do a review on it right now. But that's kind of the one I'm using. But like I said, Focusrite is probably the most popular uh, interface. I think they actually they are the number one purchased uh, interface in the world. So... If you're looking for somewhere to start, the Focusrite uh, Scarlet series is a really good starting block. PreSonus makes them, uh, like I said, Apogee makes them, so there is a lot of options, but make sure you look out and make sure they're class compliant, otherwise they won't work with your iPad Pro. Alright, so quickly to list off things that we need, uh, obviously you need an iPad. Uh, if it's a iPad that has a lightning connection, um, then you're going to need the Apple Lightning 2 camera adapter, which allows you to plug power in, but also send USB out. If you have a USB-C enabled iOS device, then obviously you need the USB-C dongle. Then you're going to need the audio interface uh, of some capacity. Obviously with your audio interface, you probably already have a microphone. If not, you're gonna run out and get one. But once you have your microphone, you're all ready to go. You're going to need a door on your iPad or iPhone. Door pretty much stands for digital audio workstation. So if you've ever wondered what that word is that people are throwing around, that's what it stands for. And this is kind of where the iPad starts to decline a little bit and what you can do. So currently Pro Tools is probably the number one used door universally, uh, which is not supported for iPad OS yet. Logic Pro X is probably the 
It's definitely Apple's competitor. So Logic Pro X is designed and maintained by Apple, and it is currently also not supported on the iPad, which is a huge bummer because Logic is pretty much what I used exclusively up until trading in for my iPad. There is a lot of rumors going around at the moment that Apple is gearing up to launch Final Cut, Logic Pro, and Xcode for the iPad soon, um, but that hasn't happened yet, so... Just gonna have to wait for that one. It is a bit of a downer because Logic is a really great software, but what we're using at the moment um, to get by is I'm just using GarageBand. So GarageBand definitely does have limitations if you wanna start diving in a little bit more to actually producing your music, but it's a, it's a great place to start with demos. So what we have here, I'll show you how I have, how I have it set up. So like I said, the interface that I'm using has four XLR inputs. So if I go to Oh, not that one. Let me click on this. So my first channel is my microphone channel. Um, so you'll see that here you can choose what inputs you have available. So what you'll see here is that my input source is the Steinberg. If I go here, you'll see that is what is it using as my audio. So the Steinberg has four XLR inputs and two line inputs on the back. So then you'll see you can use any combination of those. You can use one and two as a stereo track, or you can just use one. So the way I had it set up yesterday was input one was my, my vocal mic. And then if I go to this track and show you the same thing, this was my acoustic guitar, which I have in as channel three. The reason it was channel three and not channel two is because the audio interface does group one and two and three and four. So if I have phantom power turned on for one and two, then the second channel is gonna be feeding phantom power to my acoustic guitar and I don't really want that. So I just went to three so I could leave phantom power turned off. But to kind of demonstrate to you that you can record two inputs at the same time or more, uh, let's add another track here. So let's go just a voice track for the sake of voice. So we're gonna go with input one for this channel. Then we're gonna go back and I'm gonna add another voice channel, but this time we're gonna record input two. Just gonna set up some inputs here so we can really see what this is like. I'm gonna select input three. Three tracks will kind of give you an idea. So you will see that the bottom lead vocals track currently has the red record. If I add it to the other two that we just added, you will see just above kind of your timeline there next to the play button, the red circle now says three within it, which means you're gonna record three tracks at the same time. And if I click on that, it is now gonna record them all simultaneously. If I had three things plugged in right now, then you would be able to hear, um, or you would be able to record each input like that if you would like. That's a huge, a huge win for me that I can multi-track record on my, uh, on my iPad. That was something I was a bit concerned about, but if you have an interface with the right amount of inputs, then that's totally fine and you can totally do that. But yeah, I would, I would say the big uh, letdown that you currently have using software like GarageBand is that when it comes to plugins and EQ, you're really pretty limited to what you can have. Um, you can pretty much only have to my knowledge, if it's different, please let me know, but you can only have whatever is loaded on to GarageBand when you download it. They do update it pretty frequently, but at the moment, it's pretty limited. I would love to be able to reverse the phase on channels, really dive deeper into adding some different plugins and effects, but it definitely gets the job done. What I would say is that if you were just a singer-songwriter recording at home or you're just a, a band trying to record demos at home and you're wondering if an iPad will, will suffice, I think yes. I think an iPad is a great way to go. It's portable, it's light. If you can spend the time kind of getting the fundamentals down, then I think as long as your input recording and your, your source audio is a good enough quality, you'll be great with an iPad Pro. For a professional, I still think that you're gonna need to use an actual laptop or computer until the iPad gets more support for programs like Logic or Pro Tools. Would I change my decision to move completely to an iPad? No, I really like my iPad. The reality is anything I'm making at home is just demo quality anyway. I'm just, as much as I'd like to think that the music I produce at home is excellent quality, if I was ever to record my music to release it, I would be sending it to someone else or I would be recording in a studio um, as opposed to just recording in my home studio. Um, so for what I use it for, the iPad is an excellent tool. And the reality is the iPad is just becoming more and more and more 
Apple's flagship product. With the release of the new Magic Keyboard, it's becoming more and more like a laptop and they're starting to phase, I think, the laptop out of their market. So in the future, I think the iPad will definitely replace tools as we know it. I think we're just waiting for some of those companies that create professional programs to kind of catch up and start supporting the iPad user base so that we can use all the tools that we'd love to use from an iPad. If you have any questions about my setup, please let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, if you thought it was interesting, please uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna put my link just here. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.